We appreciate you coming in on YouTube at Roger Wilson Guitar. Um, really trying to build the channel in order to, you know, for a musician to monetize it and get more, you know, uh, I guess not credibility, but but more mileage out of it. Uh, it's really important to try to build that that watch time. And so anybody that comes in there and watches, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Right now it's 4:47 Eastern time, and uh, we've been on coming up, approaching five o'clock. So coming up on five hours of the 10 hour broadcast. <laughs> and what I'll do here is I'm going to put a, another video on it. You can check out. It's an interview I did with Joey Stuckey down in Macon, Georgia. I mentioned this earlier about getting that up. And then uh, I think it should be time to go, like, put try, try to find a cup of coffee <laughs> and come back and uh, and talk about some other stuff. And anybody else is uh, tuning in, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. You know, as ever brief as it is or just watching, um, I see some other folks. Well, my buddy Will McBride was watching earlier. David Sani, I see you on there. Uh, watching thanks for checking in david was a student of mine in uh, my last days of uh teaching out and so uh hope you're doing well hope everything is uh is good right now my concentration is as i said earlier you know after 50 years of teaching you know i, I still take on a student now and then but my real priority now has really been writing songs and recording and getting as much music out there as i can i guess it's kind of making up for lost time you know there was so much time i was on the road uh for many many years and I hope that Mike is still, there we go. So uh, from, you know, so many years and a lot of times you're, you're riding and driving and traveling and touring the hotel to the gig, to the road. And uh, if you can capture, you know, uh, there we're back. Once again, it's uh, anything can happen live here, uh, but the Wi-Fi is kind of in and out. It kind of jumps when it wants to. So I've got to kind of keep a handle on that as far as getting it reset. <clears throat> but as far as um, you know, my priorities now it's basically to write songs and uh, get them recorded. Used to having more time behind me than I than I do in front of me, or I'm so used to having so much more time in front of me than I do behind me. But that's not the way it is anymore. So, but there's a, I'm going to play some of the singles here that I've released over the past few years, and a few of the cuts and a few of the videos, in addition to a couple of the interviews. And some of the interviews were kind of, you know, pulled together some of the stories of the last 50 years. I can sit here and I can I can kind of browse through the book, you know, that I wrote back in 2015 uh, called Hurricane. It talks about, you know, my first job out of high school, which was after I left uh, Atlanta in 1972, after graduating uh, from Woodward Academy. I went back to Jersey for a year and met some friends that got in a band and started, you know, I... I had seen a lot of the Southern uh, music scene, you know, here during my years in high school, everybody from, you know, the Allman Brothers Band on down to, uh, you know, my buddy Spencer Kirkpatrick and my buddies and Eric Quincy Tate, David Cantwine, I think he might have tuned in a little while ago. Hall and Wet Willie and, you know, so much great music. And then when I went back to Jersey, um, 72 to 73, you know, I kind of ran into the E Street crowd and Bruce Springsteen playing locally and just getting started with his first album coming out of, of uh, Greetings from Asbury Park. And uh, that was one of the, the the things that I was, you know, I was talking about earlier when I featured the uh, song about my childhood hometown of Kingsburg, New Jersey. There was a, a cover there on it. It's a postcard of the uh, of the town and it's and, and I used it similar to what Bruce did with Asbury Park. He took the postcard and put greetings from Asbury Park, which was a standard postcard. And of course he owns the rights to that, which is really cool. And I took my town and did a little similar thing and made it uh, memories of Kingsburg, New Jersey. I didn't, I didn't run with the greetings thing that's already been done, but I just kind of took the same concept and tried to write about the, the town and put some stuff on it. So the, the CD was played earlier when I did uh, Coming Home to Kingsburg, and it was, um, you know, it's still available on the website for sure. But that was the, one of the videos that, that I had done. And then I think I told the story about maybe trying to, about writing the book and all that. Uh, Ducky down in Macon, Georgia, and he did a, he had a TV show that was on. I'm going to see if I can uh, pull that up and play that for you. This he, There was in two parts. And the first part here is like about seven minutes. And the second part 
is about eight or so. So we'll start with this one right here. This is uh, this is Joey Stuckey uh, interviewing me on. This is this, this goes back probably about, I'd say, about eight years, something like that. Maybe I, the book, and I was writing it in 2015, and so I think that uh, that's about right. I can't remember the dates on all this stuff, but I, the time is passing along. So here it is. Studio 41 with Joey Stuckey. It is Studio 41, and do I have a treat. I've got a good friend of mine. He's been in my orbit. We've, we've been around each other for, I mean, decades. Decades. And, 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 and uh, Roger Hurricane Wilson here with us today. And, Roger, you've got so much going on. We're actually going to do a two-part show with you. This is show one, and uh, then we're going to do another one. I want to talk about – I mean, there's so much we, – we could talk literally for hours about all the cool things you're doing. But you know what? You and I met uh, when we both did a radio show on, on a local radio station here in Macon. I mean, this is years and years ago. Yeah, it was about it was about twenty one, twenty years ago. Yeah, uh, I mean, back it, in ninety four. Well, so I was just a whippersnapper. I, I, IQ Radio. Yeah, right. And, and absolutely. And and so you've always been a blues man and someone that's helped to preserve and promote blues music. Uh, and and you're much more rounded character than that. But you've always had a special special pace for the, you know for the blues. Tell me about this amazing CD you've just put out with some high school students. I love this. Well, basically, it's uh, I've been teaching blues in the schools for a number of years. Yeah. Uh, whenever, whenever the opportunity arises, and uh, I was playing Spring in the Blues uh, Festival back in Jacksonville back in '06. Yeah. And, and in turn with that, George's Music out of uh, Jacksonville does blues in the schools, and so I'd go in for about a week ahead of time, mm -hmm. and uh, teach these kids about where the origins of American music comes from, which is the, the Delta Blues. Yeah. And so uh, basically we just try to show them that, let them know that there's life before rap and to pull their pants up at the same time. <laughs> um, but basically everything we hear uh, from jazz to, you know, to country, to rock and roll, yeah. uh, folk music, um, it, it's all influenced out of, uh, out of what came out of the Mississippi Delta. And yeah. so we just try to show that. And for myself, I've always I always loved playing guitar. That's what I started doing first. I didn't know anything about the blues. Yeah. But then, we, as a kid, I listened to rock and roll. Sure. But knowing unknowingly that it came a lot of it was British blues, that because those guys got it first and brought it back to us, and so the story goes on and it's on. It's amazing how we have that that sort of circle of influence: Europe, then America, then America, then Europe, and it just kind of keeps feeding. But th you you've recorded a CD with a high school band yeah, we backing did, uh, you up, right? Well, it was well, it was one of those schools that I that I did when I was working with those with the festival mm -hmm. and the blues in the schools, and we just developed a relationship, and. Uh, so I went back a couple of times, did a few more sessions with the kids. The school brought me in for a, a, maybe a residence kind of a session mm -hmm, for a couple mm -hmm. of days. And it just evolved into a thing where we put. I, I started working with this, with the band director, and we put a show together and did a show for the school. And then I recorded it, uh, recorded it live, and, and the CD just came out within days. And, what, and what's the name of this uh, CD? The CD is just called Live in Concert 2014, but it's the uh, it's it's the way I've leveled it uh, is Roger Hurricane Wilson with the Fletcher High School Jazz Band, aka. Uncle Johnny's Blues Machine, and, <laughs> and Jonathan Merkel is the band director at that school, so he calls it Uncle it. Johnny's Blues Machine, it. and it's just what, a blast. What song are you going to play for us today? Well, the first one I did here was uh, one that I wrote about out of frustration about trying to call a major corporation on the phone to get an answer, you know, to get information. Yeah. And a lot of times when you call a major corporation on the phone, you get a recorded thing at the front, and they ask you to, you know, tell you to uh, punch a few numbers, some mm -hmm. prompts to get some information. And that's not really what I'm talking about. That just eliminates people having to repeat themselves over and over answering the same questions. Right. The problem is, is when you get to about six or seven prompts and the human being comes on the phone, then the human being never knows anything. Yeah. Right. So then they put you on hold and they come back and they still don't know anything. And they tell you, said, well, I'll have to get back with you. So that's the name of the song. I, I'll have to get back I'll with you. Back with, that's great. This is Roger Hurricane Wilson on Studio 41. You are going to love it. Well, I called on the phone to get a little information. The voice on the other end expressed a little hesitation. She said, what is it, sir, that you'd like to know? I said, I'd like to know one thing that I didn't know before I called. She put me on hold, was listening to headline news. Then she came back on the phone and said, 
I have to get back with you. Well, I went to the auto store to get a part for my car. The man behind the counter said, let me look here in the catalog. Well, I sure was hoping you wouldn't have to look too far. He said, this part is hard to find for this type of car. He went into the back room and returned not a moment too soon. He had that look on his face and said, I have to get back with you. Uh, I'll take it one time. That nobody knows a thing There's an information overload And it's all at a fingertips The chances of finding an answer Are at an all-time low Surely there's an answer to a question That somebody knows Then there are those questions that need A quick answer to the ones that you ask, the answer is a peek-a-boo. The question that cuts to the chase and deserves a yes or no. The ones that tell you what you want to know and don't rake you over the coals. Well, I'm so glad my wife, when she thought it through, when she decided to marry me, she didn't say, I have to get back with you. Tell me something new that lets me think you have a clue. Tell me anything you want. Have to get back with you. I'll oh, tell me anything. Tell me they don't make them anymore. Just don't tell me you have to get back with me. fifth hour of the live stream and uh i really uh i really appreciate everybody being here i'm telling you so kind of a big job reflecting back you know over 50 years as i said all day this afternoon just tap, catching in on a few little stories here that that have transpired and i was talking about you know making the transition from north to south and south to north and back and forth and all that so that was the first part of um from joey stuckey and uh i'm gonna go back in here and get part two of that uh, but i appreciate you guys um uh, stopping in and making a comment here and there so um i'm gonna go back and find part two of this joe joey did a great interview he had a great little tv show down in down there in macon georgia and uh i was really proud to be on it's been been quite a long time i guess around 2015 something like that well, that was, let's see. Yeah, it was about 2015 because I had done that CD with the high school in 2014. And uh, that's called Live in Concert 2014. So that's that's kind of what happened. So we'll play part two of the interview here from Joey Stuckey back in Macon, Georgia. Studio 41 back with our special guest, Roger Hurricane Wilson. Now, we talked about some great music that you've been doing last time, but I want to talk a little bit about the book that you're working on and also your radio show. Well, the book is, um, is simply entitled Hurricane. Uh, I, I dedicated 2015 as the year of the book, yeah. and I'm working on that, and hopefully by the end of the year it'll be out. But it just tells the story of, of my having started out as a kid, uh, basically infatuated with playing drums and then going into the school band, learning how to play guitar. Then it goes into the broadcast thing. And it just all, a lot of the great adventures. And I, I really consider the music taking me everywhere from having worked uh, with uh, a lot of great musicians to working in the broadcast uh, industry with CNN to going to yeah. the White House to 
talking to guys like Bruce Springsteen and being influenced by Dwayne Allman and sure. and all this other stuff, and it just takes the whole runs the whole gamut of that, pretty much. And so hopefully it's gonna uh, it'll make some sense when it all comes out. Yeah, and then and you've got a, a radio. You've had several radio shows, just like me. You've done several different shows. What's the current show called, and how can they find it? Well, the show is uh, it's called Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show, and you can find it on Facebook at KALA. The station is KALA FM out of uh, Davenport, Iowa, at St. Ambrose University. But it does stream live as but well. But it streams live every. That's on every Monday night. But it's also archived on my website at hurricanewilson.com. You can mm -hmm. go to a just click on the past radio shows tab, mm -hmm. and all the shows are right there. You can hear them all, you know, forever. And, and, and the last thing we should let people know is that you 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 live up in sort of the the Marietta kind of area uh, in Georgia, but you you teach guitar lessons there. But you also do some online guitar lessons. I, I sure do. Um, basically, the, I operated the Roger Wilson Guitar Studio in Atlanta back started in 1973, and the brick and mortar location was wow. in it was in North Atlanta till uh, from 73 to 85. Mm -hmm. But now it's all online, and it's uh, Roger. RogerWilsonGuitarStudio.com, but you can also reach it through HurricaneWilson.com, and I do um, do some videos and uh, Skype teaching as well as some in-person teaching in the Marietta, Georgia area. Awesome! You, you've got so many cool things going on. What song are you gonna play for us today? Well, this next song is uh, both of these uh, songs were on my CD called "The Rainbow Up Ahead," which is an Americana CD that I did a few uh, years back. I recorded it in Nashville in 2010. Mm -hmm. This song here, um, I was watching a news program one day after having left the news business, and there was a young lady doing an interview with a couple of guests, and uh, not unlike the interview you're doing with me here, yeah. but what happened was uh, one of the guests turned around and asked her a question, and that's not, that usually not supposed to happen, <laughs> right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, she didn't know what to say. It really blindsided her, Yeah. and you know, with everything going on in the world today, she just simply said... She says, well, I just don't know what I believe anymore because there's so much out there like political correctness and information overload and all that. And as soon as she said that, I had a line for a song, and I wrote this song. It's called I Just Don't uh, Know What I Believe Anymore. Awesome, and it's fantastic. You're going to love it. Once again, Roger Hurricane Wilson on Studio 41. When I was a little boy, just starting school, all they ever told me was to live by the rule. I always believed what they told me I should. I thought they were right, and I took them at their word. As years went by, Many questions arose Seems what once was isn't now But no one knows What was wrong is now right What was right is now all wrong I wish I knew the answers So I could sing them in this song Everybody's talking about what you can and cannot say Everybody's telling us that their way is the only way Everybody's trying to change each other's mind for sure I just don't know what I believe anymore Freedom of speech was written to protect But now we're told to be politically correct I say what I have to say And I'll say it my own way Well, I'll say Merry Christmas I won't say Happy Holiday Everybody's talking about what you can and cannot say Everybody's telling us that their way is the only way Everybody's trying to change each other's mind for sure I just don't know what I believe anymore
Isn't anybody held accountable today? Doesn't anybody have responsibility? It seems like no one could care less anymore. We got what we paid for, should we have paid a little more? Everybody's talking about what you can and cannot say. Everybody's telling us that their way is the only way. Everybody's trying to change each other's mind for sure. I just don't know what I believe anymore. Everybody's talking about what you can and cannot say. Everybody's telling us that their way is the only way. Everybody's trying to change each other's mind for sure. I just don't know what I believe anymore. I just don't know what I believe anymore. I just don't know what I believe anymore. All right, so that was the uh, that was the interview I did with um, Joey Stuckey back around uh, I think it was March of 2015. Yeah, because the uh, live in 2014 with the Jacksonville Beach uh, Fletcher High School High School Band CD we did was in the fall of 2014. So yeah, I remember that pretty well. Um, that was that was kind of cool. So as we go back and re, you know just continue the afternoon here, I'm finally grabbed a cup of coffee. And uh, just hanging out for the afternoon, you know, talking about some of the stuff that transpired over the past 50 years uh, as as far as the teaching experience. You know, it it kind of went in different. um, I suppose it was kind of an evolution, I suppose, because there was the. uh, The physical location starting in 1973 in North Atlanta, uh, on Far Road and Buckhead till 1980, and then on Piedmont Road from 80 to 85. Then after that, I transferred the ownership to my home, but then went in the broadcast business for a long time. And then about 1986, ended up at CNN, and still playing in a band, doing gigs, you know, writing songs and all that, raising a family. And uh, kept doing that. was with uh, CNN from uh, 86 to 96. And in 1996, about a month before the Olympics, uh, there's a bunch of folks that, you know, numbered about then, that right after the merger with uh, Time Warner. And uh, so, but I made it, you know, I made it 10 years, had a great career there, still played music. Uh, I remember the day that I got let go, I was uh, pretty well devastated by that because I had made a lot of friends there. And back then there was no internet, uh, no social media, no way. In other words, after I left and, you know, was escorted out of the building uh, and the big steel doors, you know, at the CNN center closed behind me, you know, I was immediately cut off from many, many friends that I've made over the past 10 years. I was more bent out of shape about that than anything. Uh, but I, my equipment and uh, was, I had to get, I was on the way to a gig. And so I, I left there and I went to the gig and, kind of never really looked back and then went on the road full time and started, you know, going across the country and, uh, putting out some, you know, putting out some CDs. So in, in 19, that was in 1996, 
and my when that happened as i think back time wise you know chronologically uh that's when the second cd live from the eye of the storm came out on hot tracks records and it was right about that same time that was the olympics in 96 the olympics i left uh walked out of cnn on june 22nd which was two days ago um uh, in 96 and then the olympics happened in in july so i remember that and then i went to the gig and then started in 1998 first or started in 97 i guess i uh i toured canada went on a tour there in 97 across the country we're doing a lot of dates on the road uh it was pretty wild and then uh, i started putting this cd together in 1998 I released uh, the business of the blues and it was uh on, that was the first one that was done on my own label i created my own label called uh blue storm records and after because i've been with a local label in atlanta under alex janolis he might even be on here watching today i'm not sure but he had hot tracks records and got me started and got me out of, of the atlanta area and got m more nationally known and, and all that and then uh so in 98, I released, you know, the business of the blues. I might even be able to find a track of that maybe to, uh, to play a little bit later on. And, uh, so such as the beginning of, uh, you know, an independent music career, if you can call it that, you're still, you're still out playing the joints and, you know, dealing with, uh, the madness, you know, out, out on the road and all that. And the crowds are started to starting to change too. I mean, there was a lot of places we played. I did a lot of, you know, some really cool festivals. And, uh, in, yeah, 1998, went to Canada again. That was, uh, that was cool. Uh, started, uh, touring North and South. So in 19, in 98 was when I first played the Stanhope house in New Jersey. And that's where, uh, I started, uh, working out of the Northeast a lot more. You know, originally, I was talking about earlier that, you know, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. My mom was from Atlanta. She moved to New Jersey, and I was born there. And I came back to Georgia. So in 1995, my uh, my dad passed away, which was a real shame because he didn't get, really get to see me do, you know, some of the stuff I thought he would really, you know, dig seeing me do uh, music-wise. Uh, I think he might have, you know, wasn't sure if I was going to pull it off or not. But uh, he knew that I was teaching and I was running a business and everything. So he's proud of me that way. And, and I was at CNN, you know, working there when he passed in, uh, in 95. I didn't leave CNN until 96. And then after, uh, in, in 96, right after a week, like a, after, right after I left CNN, I ended up moving my mom back to Georgia. <clears throat> so that was a feat in itself. And house and relocated her. I went, you know, Went up to Jersey, you know, rented a truck and everything and moved everything down and brought her back down here. And uh, so I had never toured Jersey before that. It wasn't until after she was moved and my dad was gone that I started going back to the Northeast and and things started falling together up there. I met a lot of great people, did a lot of great gigs, you know, New York City, northern New York, Maine. Uh, things just kind of evolved, you know, the timing is everything and that's kind of how the timing fell that, that way so i look into uh so i'm, I'm playing the northeast more I, I started playing the stanhope house regularly and became friends with those folks and it became kind of a regular four time a year thing where i could anchor myself out of the northeast there and then go out and, and do some other stuff and it was really 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 great some of the winters were a little tough <laughs> negotiating those, but the summers were, were a lot of fun. And all the dates that I did there were just, uh, were just a lot of fun, no doubt. So I thought maybe, uh, if I can go back in here and, uh, well, I'll tell you what's, what's really cool. Uh, one of the things that happened, one of the opportunities that I had, and I believe I did it right here. There it is. There was, um, Early on in the 70s, I was, I told you I was doing a lot of radio ahead of time. 
and uh it was you know it was christian radio god it was gospel radio <clears throat> and so i had had the pleasure of doing some uh some recording sessions and i was able to jump in uh I, I jumped in with savoy records savoy records was a r b early r b label out of new jersey of all things and uh uh, Fred Mendelssohn was the legendary producer. This was stuff they were doing, you know, like it was uh, black music, R&B, uh, sort of blues influence, but not blues, but yet just uh, but go gospel, mostly gospel. Just some wonderful stuff. And I've landed a couple of sessions in uh, Atlanta. I remember at Master Sound Studios and all that. And I think through the uh, connections, I, I had been playing with a, with, you know, a black gospel group that I met working in radio and I had done some live things with them and it was just a lot of fun. It was such a blast. And I, I learned uh, a lot from that, but then I, I was able to go into my first studio experiences. We're going in there and recording with uh, groups like that. And so I did a, a one session and Fred Mendelson was there and he liked what I, what I had to offer. And he put me on a live recording with uh, a group out of Miami. It was a husband and wife team, uh, legendary. They're long, gone now but they were called the consolers and they were a couple and they had played a lot of churches and had a bunch of albums out from the back in the day and they were just a duo but it was very very soulful and i got to play guitar with them and i think what i'll do here i'll uh i, I did a radio show with them with the record that i played on and i think what i'll do is i'll go ahead and feature that here and this is like uh, this is like late 70s i guess probably around 78 something like that it was just a really it was in a church on a sunday afternoon but it was powerful stuff and all i all my job was was to to fit in behind what they what these folks were playing so the guitar that you hear in there is me in the background but it was it was really really powerful and and uh it's something i haven't really shared a lot but it's and it's a recording credit that i i really st still uh you know feel thankful that i was able to get and i guess that's when my uh, my life was starting to change and starting to improve a little when uh, I got around these folks. So let's give that a shot. We'll go, uh, we'll add this to the stream here. This is the consolers. I want to thank you. Ha! 
Welcome back once again, everybody, to Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. We're on this edition. I'm really going back and uh, finding some uh, nostalgic stuff for myself, basically, along with uh, some great gospel music. Uh, back in about 1983, this is uh, one of my first recording experiences, uh, back in doing a live uh, live performance with a, a wonderful gospel group. They were called the Consolers, and uh, they were a husband and wife team that became extremely popular during the, th the 50s and 60s with their long song sermons and down-home stories of spiritual triumph. And they consisted of Sullivan Pugh and his wife, Iola Pugh, and they were from Miami. And I was, uh, I was young at the time. I was about, I guess I was about 28 or so, and I was playing music for a living and teaching guitar lessons and all that and going on the radio. And I made friends with Fred Mendelson, who was the executive producer of Savoy Records out of New Jersey. And it was a, a black gospel label that really established uh, black gospel music as a, an official art form. And so uh, I was very fortunate to be in this session. I'm playing guitar in the background uh, behind these folks, and that was what I was hired to do. And I had a lot of fun doing it. The album is entitled The Consolers Give God Thanks. And uh, you just heard the title track, which was Give God Thanks. So I'm going to go through the album and uh, play it for you here. It's uh, some very moving stuff, and I'm really enjoying getting to feature it. And I'm going back and kind of reflecting uh, quite a few years back when I when I was on the uh, session for this. It was really uh, a surreal experience and something I'll always take with me. And so I'm sharing it with you here on the American Music Show. Here's the Consolers. And it's called Getting Ready for the Rapture, right here on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show.
Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show.
That's live music by the wonderful uh, gospel group The Consolers from the album entitled Give God Thanks. It's recorded back in 1983, released in 1984 in Savoy Records, uh, the gospel label out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. And uh, the reason I'm playing this is uh, I just happened to be playing guitar on it back then, and it was just uh, some music I was going through to just reflect on a few things. And uh, these folks were legendary. I mean, they had been they started playing uh, in their group the year I was born in 1953. And so uh, they've been around a long time. They had uh, been on the same label with James Cleveland and uh, just a lot of other uh, great legendary uh, gospel musicians and artists. And so I had the pleasure of doing this uh, session. It was a live session in Atlanta, Georgia uh, for Savoy Records. And the album is entitled Give God Thanks. So we just heard, uh, we started off with Give God Thanks and then Getting Ready for the Rapture and Waiting for My Child to Come Home was the last one. And we're going to move along here with Christ Makes the Difference. And this is the Consolers out of Miami, Florida, legendary gospel group on Savoy Records. And you're hearing it right here on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. Thank you. 
Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. All I say, so God is going to be into the middle there somewhere. There we go. We need you.
Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show.
And that's some powerful stuff right there. That's the Consolers from the Savoy album released back in 1984, uh, recorded in 1983 in a live session in Atlanta, Georgia, called Give God Thanks. And that's uh, yours truly, Roger Hurricane Wilson. I'm just on the background guitar on that, but it was a wonderful session to be involved in. But I just uh, always loved uh, this type of music. A lot of my early recording sessions were with black gospel groups, and uh, I just really cherished the experience that I had. Uh, the Consolers, again, was a husband and wife team uh, group, and they, basically it was uh, Iola and Sullivan Pugh from Miami, Florida. And unfortunately, uh, in 1994, uh, Iola passed away, and then later on, uh, around 2010, uh, Sullivan passed away. But they uh, they played for a long time. They formed their group in 1953 and have a bunch of albums, so you can always look up the Consolers and check out uh, stuff they've done along the way. Uh, this one album was done uh, back in 1983, released in 84, called Give God Thanks. So you're hearing it right here. I'm sharing it with you on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. We started out on side B. We're play playing the vinyl copy arrangements. And, of course, uh, Jordan River was the first one on side B. And then the Almighty Power. And this one is called I Feel Good. Not to be confused with James Brown's version of I Feel Good, but this is a whole other one here and a lot of power in it. So I hope you enjoy it. The Consoler is right here on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. Yeah. 
Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. So that I can be free. So that I could be free. Jesus is the one that paid the price. So that I could be free. So that I could be free. So that
Well, once again, some powerful gospel music right here on Roger Hurricane Wilson's American Music Show. That's the Consolers from the album released in 1984 in Savoy Records out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, the legendary uh, black gospel label. And the album was entitled Give God Thanks. I'm sharing that with you because I was going back through some of the stuff I'd done early on in my career. And uh, this is one where I was playing guitar in the background, which is what I was hired to do. And I just had a real uh, surreal, wonderful experience uh, working with these folks. They put their group together back in 1953 and uh, had played for many, many years. Uh, it was Iola and Sullivan Pugue from Miami, Florida, the Consolers. And you can uh, Google them up and they've got a lot of material out. Uh, this is one that I just was uh, had the pleasure of being able to stumble in on and be there. That was the uh, rest of the vinyl album. That was side two. We heard Jordan River, The Almighty Power, I Feel Good So That I Could Be Free, and Oh How Happy I Will Be, and that, that was side two. Oh, well, there we're back. I just played uh, about an hour's worth of uh, my radio show that aired back featuring the uh, Consolers. That was the uh, album that I had played on back in the 70s on Savoy Records and just uh, was hired to play some background guitar behind this wonderful gospel duo. Uh, they're no longer with us. They were recording, they've been recording since 1953, the year I was born. So um, that was around, I think that was around 1976, uh, maybe 77, I think around, uh, around that, yeah, around 76. And it was just a real exhilarating th time. I was doing part-time radio on a, on a gospel station as a DJ. And I made a lot of contacts that way as far as uh, folks that were in the you know gospel music business. And I just kind of fell in and played guitar with them and they, they seemed to like it and, and brought me on. It was just some, some really good early experiences. I wish I could uh, have more of those for sure. But um, now right now it's uh, 6.25 Eastern time. We're in the seventh hour here of the, uh, of the all day anniversary celebration live stream uh, 50 years of the Roger Wilson guitar studio that that I operated and still am operating uh, not as much but just uh, when I'm still operating still alive and kicking now and then I've uh, uh, taken on a student but mostly after 50 years of teaching guitar you know there was really over a thousand students that I documented over the 50 year period that I had that taken lessons from me and I think uh, you know maybe some hopefully some learn a few things and i know there's only a handful that I'm, I'm in touch with now but there's a few out there that are still you know still playing and still working and a lot of them were little kids when they were taken with me and now they've got their own families and they're still in touch with me and it's just uh it's, it's an amazing it's a it's a really good feeling to have have done that um i'm not sure i moved any mountains or anything but i you know i, I feel like uh i set out to do what I had set out to do. I'm just, that was just basically play my guitar. So as I, you know, continue through here today, um, I've got some more, you know, my con my concentration now, I was saying earlier, I'm not teaching as much. Every now and then a student will call me. They want to improve on something or take a, get, you know, a little brush up or refresher on some, you know, scale technique or some, some guitar licks or some kind of something. Uh, I'll get a call about it and, and we'll uh, schedule something and do it. The website is still in force. It's rogerwilsonguitarstudio.com. But uh, my main concern now is, is uh, been, you know, writing songs and recording and putting out, you know, stuff on a regular basis on my own record label and getting it on the radio. And all that, a lot of that can be done, you know, remotely now. <laughs> still fun to get out and play. And I still do that uh, periodically. It's not, not on the road like I'm, you know, as much anymore. Maybe a little trip here and there to do something but uh you know the music is still still important and it's still something i think i you know i feel like i, I really need to do um <laughs> looking back i keep going through the book you know that i wrote back in i, I wrote it in 2015 it was released in um in 20 uh 2016 so it's been out about you know seven years now <laughs> 